serious, urban explorers, what was the most scariest thing you've experienced while exploring? This was in a village up in the hills in India. The sun sets there pretty late during the summer, but the hills get extremely quiet after sundown. One day in June, a couple of years ago around 8pm, I was walking around an isolated area exploring. There was a tiny road on one side of which there were some houses. On the other side, there was a huge valley. The road led to a forest, which monkeys frequent, and I wasn't planning to go there since these monkeys tend to be hostile. I took a turn inwards after the houses stopped. There were just dust roads here and some heavy undergrowth. I was about to turn around since it was nearing sunset, and it gets very dark right after. However, I kept moving and suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, found a clearing. The bushes had all been removed. It was a perfect circular shape, and there were some thick branches that were kept in place of the perimeter, perhaps to prevent people from entering. I dislodged them and stepped in and saw a bed of logs that was placed in the middle of the clearing. It was covered by a white sheet. It looked like a Hindu funeral pyre, but you can't just hold funerals anywhere randomly. That place gave me the chills for some reason. I could hear monkeys howling and birds chirping all this time, but there was complete silence in the clearing. I turned around and saw that the branches that I had displaced to enter were back in place. I got very spooked out and left immediately. I live in a very rural area. There are many abandoned buildings. Sometimes entire towns are abandoned, though you have to be armed when exploring as abandoned houses are prime estate for meth labs. I've been fortunate to have not crept upon a meth lab yet. Anyways, not sure if this counts, but there is an all but completely abandoned town I explored. The scary part wasn't the buildings. Most of them seem typical, gutted, musky, edgy graffiti, the works. The church was a little odd, as it was the only building that seemed untouched, despite being vacant the longest. Everything was still where it was left, no graffiti. The cemetery, however, gave me probably the most disturbing experience so far. The cemetery was near the church with a dirt road running through the middle of it. The youngest grave was 1934, the oldest were late 1700s. Most of the tombstones were dilapidated, infant tombstones missing their lamb figurines, fences warped, and a lot of them not even standing anymore or even in the correct places. I remember a couple dozen of the tombstones being uprooted and haphazardly leaned against the trees that also began to swallow them over time. This place was truly abandoned, generations of people forgotten, with no one left to pay their respects. Remember how I said there was a road in the middle of the cemetery? Well, the cemetery was there before the road. I guess I was too dumb at the time to fully realize that those tombstones against the trees actually belonged to the ones under the road. I was unfortunate enough to find out that none of them were relocated. It had rained a couple of days prior to my exploration, so the road was soft. So I go back into the car after checking things out and make my way through the road. Just before leaving the span of the cemetery, the front of my car falls and I become stuck. Thinking I just hit a wet spot, I go out and see. I didn't like what I saw. Under my tires was an amalgamation of wooden splinters, decomposing fabrics, and I saw a glimpse of bone. I didn't know the sheriff's number, and I needed someone who can pull me out, so even though I didn't want to, I called 911 and told them what I needed and that I fell into an unknown grave. I ended up coming home pretty shaken up about it. Surprisingly, all the car got was a small scuff. By the way, even after, they still didn't relocate the bodies, not even the one I accidentally struck. They just blocked the road long enough for them to build it up some more. When I was around 8 or 9, my sisters and I would stay the night with our friends. They lived in what is essentially an entire town made of trailer parks. Their house was right next to this abandoned house that looked straight out of a horror film, run down, grayed wood, boarded up windows, dead trees in the yard. It was always kind of a thing that we would dare each other to go in, but we must have all been cowards because we all found reasons to not follow through, until one day it was suggested we all go in. It should have been condemned. The inside was full of broken glass and rotting floors. There were rusty, brownish stains on all of the walls, and in the kitchen, there was nothing but a wooden contraption with strings hanging from it and fur all around the floor. It was an animal torture device. Once we realized this, 
We booked it and never went back or talked about it ever again. And I had nightmares that entire night. I was exploring an old train station in Detroit. Not from there, it was just visiting family. Locals will know what one I'm talking about. It was just me and my aunt driving through in the middle of the night and spreading milkweed seeds so that butterflies would come through in the springtime. The building is actively being restored and we drove around the back side. Not seeing any signs saying no trespassing, we got out and started tossing seeds along the fence line. We finished spreading the seed and as we were returning to the car, we saw red and blue lights. So we ran to the car and jumped in as a police cruiser pulled up beside us and then another one pulled up behind us. I was thinking to myself, this is it. There goes my future. I'm going to get busted for trespassing and they're going to find the weed in my system and I'm going to be in the system for the rest of my life. My aunt is a really pretty woman and so she started crying and saying that she and I were dealing with the death of my uncle who had died two years prior and he let us go and she said, if they ID'd me and ran it right there, I would have gotten arrested on the spot. I actually got busted trespassing on government property and my name is on a watch list. That was the closest call I've had in a while. Extremely long story short, a friend and I were exploring an old maintenance tunnel in our town. We brought rope and flashlights because after a few dozen yards it's impossible to see anything and we do not want to get lost. For context, this tunnel was rumored to be haunted or whatever because it used to be a hot spot for satanic rituals and whatnot from Satanists and the like. We got pretty deep in, our flashlights randomly shut off, the rope was cut, and my friend disappeared. I found him trying to claw his way out of some runoff pond in the middle of it all. I got him out, he almost drowned, and there was nobody else around. We left, never talked about it after that, and never urban explored again. It didn't help that we were impressionable fifth graders. Definitely one of the creepiest experiences in that area. After that, he became extremely introverted, suicidal, and overall was suddenly a different person. Before this all, he was a really happy, bubbly dude, and we'd go exploring and play Pokemon and Bakugan together. After this, he became really quiet, withdrawn, sold all of his Pokemon slash miscellaneous toys. Overall, just a weird and disturbing experience from the proximate cause to the aftermath of it all. I don't really buy into the paranormal stuff and feel like most of it has an explanation, so I don't really have many stories about that, other than the time I was exploring a 150-year-old abandoned asylum by myself and the wind was blowing through a vent on the wall and making this really annoying rattling noise. I muttered, stop it, while I was setting up a photo and the noise immediately stopped and never started up again whatever. I was comfortable in the place and never felt like I was in any danger during the many times I visited. Scariest moment related to other people was exploring in Gary, Indiana a while back. Incidentally, we'd run into some local kids in an abandoned church who told us police don't care if they catch you in the buildings. Sure enough, the next day we had just finished exploring the abandoned post office and walked out of the front door to find a police car at the curb. Locked eyes with the officers, one of them rolled his window down and asked how we were doing, then told us to stay out of trouble and drove away. Sure enough, police don't care. Also, on the same trip, exploring an abandoned hospital with the ceilings caving in and tons of water damage and the power was still on. Fun time trying to make sure you didn't touch anything that could electrocute you. There's an abandoned sawmill near my parents' house with a rock quarry filled with water in the back. I live in the middle of nowhere, so it's pretty common to just ride around and explore since there's nothing else to do. My friend and I have been there many times before since it was a pretty chill spot to hang out and smoke or whatever. We were riding around with some girls late one night and they had never been, so we decided to take them. It's very dark and I was the only one with a decent flashlight. We parked at the mill and started walking the trail back to the quarry with me leading the way. We were almost to the water and I was probably a good 10 feet or so ahead of everyone else. I shined my flashlight around just looking at stuff. Sure enough, right at the edge of the water was a fat, homeless couple laying completely buck naked on a towel. As soon as my light hit them, the male's head shot up and he looked straight at me. I was the only one that saw them because I took my light off them very quickly. I stopped and very calmly said, guys, we need to leave now. My friends took off running without even a second thought, 
without knowing what it was. I couldn't help but laugh at this point from the absurdity, so I was running behind them, full speed giggling like a little girl. Looking back, I'm sure the couple was just as scared as I was, but I'm glad we didn't stay to find out. I was exploring an abandoned asylum in the south with a group of friends. We were inside and heard another group of people outside in the wooded area. One of us threw a rock at them, and they yelled, that's how you get shot. So of course, I, like idiots, we threw a bunch of rubble in the area. Then we heard gunshots coming at us. The place is known to have a lot of meth addicts frequenting the area. I wasn't too scared, because my friend carried if it did get serious, and I didn't feel like it would. A little while later, the cops came in through the gates. They usually patrol the area, and we decided it was best to dip out. On the way out, my friend realized he dropped his gun in the asylum, and we would have to go back while the cops were there. I think that was the scariest part. The person told the cops the situation, the cops laughed, and we just left, so nothing came of it. Another one that isn't really urban exploration was when I went on a date in the woods, two cars came and shone their headlights on us and drove off. Then four cars came and boxed our truck in. At least 20 plus people came out and I really thought they were going about to sacrifice us. I'm still here though. This was, if I remember correctly, October of 2008 when I was 15 because I wanted to be a rebel. Smoking weed, drinking and being a daredevil, even though I wasn't the popular kids. I was nerdy and five foot four, but those were my cringe days. Anyways, me and my friends, Chris, a tall, lanky Asian kid, Michael, a light-skinned kid who always had girls in our school, and Angelo, a nerdy Hispanic kid, decided to go visit an abandoned tunnel in New Jersey called the Gates of Hell. A three-hour walk, but my friend Michael had his license. I didn't want to go because deep down, I'm a Catholic kid, but with a few beers, convinced me that I was ready. We went in, just pure walking. We were going to walk away, but then we felt colder as we went deeper in, so Angela wanted to go even deeper. So we did. As being said, we went even deeper, then we heard a voice. Now that I say it, it was an old man voice and a barking noise, but when I was at that time 15, I thought it was a demon, so we needed to see this, but the man was oddly skinny. More skinnier than Chris and taller too, I'd say about six foot three, and the dog was even worse. He was like a skeleton, basically. We thought they were hobos. We said, you need anything? And Chris used his flashlight, and we couldn't see anything, then turned it off. There he was again. We were freaking the fuck out, and my arm hairs went up a bit, and I felt my body shaking and something crawling under my skin as we were running. Then we saw the light, and we escaped. Honestly, it felt like the exit was getting smaller and smaller. After that, me and Angelo were barfing, either because of the beers or how much we ran. Michael started up the car. It wasn't quiet, but awkward. Chris was getting mad that we didn't go deeper, but I don't think that was a person to this day. I think it was a demon or a ghost or something. 